Right to the air. Here is Goff. Buying time to his left. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Play action. It's Goff. They'll roll him out right. Complete. This is Mitchell. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 11 yards there and a Lion first down. Well, he's already shown on this opening drive that he will run the football. We know that about him, Charles. So maybe when he gets outside the pocket, the defense a little wary about the run and he's able to convert the pass. And that wariness will often cause you to be a step or two slow. And sometimes you get so focused on, will he or won't he run the football? You forget that there are receivers in your... A battle for it, and it's intercepted. Eddie Jackson picks it, and the Bears are going to take over once again at their own 25-yard line. That right there is the inauspicious start that they were hoping to avoid, the turnover on the first possession. I love how you use those college-bound words like that, inauspicious. Well done. I really appreciate that. Thank but here's the thing for me. I'm just wondering if their game plan is incorrect. You know, I think they felt like they could come in and throw it around pretty well. That interception early, they may rethink how they go about attacking. Room here to run. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. It'll go as a gain of 25 on a play that started back at the 25. You know, I have a pretty good friend, Charles Davis, who tells me that when he sees plays like that, strong runs to the right, reminds him of the 1960s Green Bay Packers. Boy, those were the days back when the fullback actually carried the ball as well as blocked. Then you had a halfback. You had pulling guards, guys who could get out and run. And you can hear the great coach saying it back then. So we get a seal here and a seal here, and we run this play right in the alley. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. They went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery. And a pretty good run as he'll get this down close to a first at the Lions 42. It's a gain of six, moves him to a manageable third and two situation. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. On third and short, they'll try option left. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Fields now to throw. Throw left side here into the hands of Wesco, the tight end. So give him two yards there on the completion, and that's going to bring up second down. Fields leaving it with Montgomery here on the option. And a good-looking run there as he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18-yard line. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. A read option, here's Montgomery. A great move by Montgomery. And he gets it down close to the 10-yard line. 58 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Now Fields. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Touchdown! Chase Claypool, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Bears post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Oh, he missed the PAT. No good on the extra point, so a let down there, and this will stay a six-point ball game. Oh, did the Bears get it? They did, Chicago football. 
just scored. They got the lead, and they decide to keep their foot on the accelerator, so to speak. Scouting, scouting, scouting. They had to have seen something in their preparation for this game that told them in this situation, if they get the look they like, let's go ahead and go for it anyway. They like being bold. And that'll hurt the average a bit, as this time they're able to get him behind the line. They'll fake the handoff. Now Fields being chased out left. Now he'll throw deep left side. And this is caught. Touchdown, Chicago. Chase Claypool. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Bears are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Fields trying to throw for it. That is caught. He's got it. And the lead will move to 14 to nothing. That right there makes up for that missed extra point they had after the first score. Yeah, they went ahead and got back to level by going for two and having the normal amount of points. So that works out pretty well for them. And if you're the kicker, don't worry about it too much. Now they've got back to where they want to be, they'll try it out there for the next one. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. And they're in an early hole. The first drive, they threw the interception. That led to a touchdown. So, decent-sized deficit early on. It is, but I think you hit the key words, early on. So, they have to decide, do we even need to change game plan? Or do we just need to execute better and try and get back in this game? A play fake for Swift. Now Goff. He's airing it out for Williams. And that is caught. Touchdown, Detroit. Jamison Williams, 42 yards. And the Lions have cut it back within a score. They were already down two scores early. They needed something to try to stem that tide, and that certainly qualifies a big play to get them in the end zone. It qualifies indeed because, let's face it, they don't get something done on this drive, turn it back over, this game could be 88 and out the gate early. What? 88 and out the gate? Yeah. Uh, what's that? Well, listen, I used to hear my old man talk about it. It usually meant that thing's done. Well, now that they got the touchdown, it's, it's not 88 and out the gate. We still got a good game going ahead of us. Pulls it in at the 13. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. They're starting to pull away with this one. Early on that first quarter, they didn't look so great offensively. What has changed? Sometimes it's just a matter of doing what you plan to do better. Sometimes you just put that all together and you execute. Other times, it's just in a simple adjustment in your game plan, finding a spot that maybe was a little weaker than maybe you thought, and going to that. So many different things, so many different ways, but right now, you got to like what they're doing. They have put distance between themselves and their opponent. Looking to add on here in the second quarter. Second and five now. Fields. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Cole Komet. And they will get him down, but not before he gets very good yardage there, as that will lead us right into the two-minute warning. On first down, Fields. Dancing to his left. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. That nearly picked. It's second down now. That was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket, I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage. But what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move, defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of them. And I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try a pass downfield that fell incomplete. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 34-yard line. 18 yards on that one, and Chicago has the first. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Here's Fields. Eluding the pressure right. And they're going to move it down inside the 25. From the 24, Fields forced out to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts. 
as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Facing second and short, that gives you a chance to go for a bigger play through the air. But I think he said to himself, why don't I just handle this one? Got all the yards you needed and then some and made that snap a huge success. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Now it's Fields. Fields hit and the ball is loose. And this is scooped up by the Lions. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. You can't admire his willingness to sacrifice his body to try and pick up the first down, and I do. But let's face it, you know his coaches are going to warn him about diving or extending for a marker for this exact reason. So much easier to have the ball knocked free when you're extended like that. So if you're going to dive, you got to make sure you secure the football, which he didn't. Steps away to his left. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. I have a few questions about that throw because to me there just wasn't a lot there. I thought he tried to do a little bit too much, almost tried to will a receiver open when there was no chance he was going to be. Nice job by the linebacker being all over that one and knocking it away. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. That sure looked like a nice call by the defense and they're very cohesive in their coverage. As soon as he cut inside, they broke on the football and met him as the ball got there and forced the incompletion. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. From the end zone, Goff. And that is incomplete. Boy, he did everything but hold on to it. But a nice play defensively, and now it brings up fourth down. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Here comes the Lions punter now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. Oh, the return is Jones. An excellent return that time, 26 yards. And there'll be time for maybe one final play before halftime. Santos' kick is up and through. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. So two quarters down, two remain. Charles and I return after the break. And we welcome you back now. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, getting set for quarter number three here. Set to resume. Here we go with the second half. The Bears holding the lead and ready to receive the kick. Taken from about the 12. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And they've got the lead, CD. What do you expect from them in the second half? Well, I like what they were able to do on the ground in the first half because they had a lot of success running the ball, and I certainly think we'll see more of that. But I keep an eye on that defense, and I think their coaches up in the box will do the exact same thing. If they start to see one or two guys start to creep towards the line of scrimmage, that'll be licensed to take some shots downfield. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. 81 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll even avoid the contact in the end as he will finally slide to a hole. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. I am willing to bet that he got a monster grin on his face when he saw what was happening. Man Cubs were so committed to denying a big throw that it pulled attention away from him, and he had an easy lane to hit, and hit it he did. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and ten. 
Now Montgomery, he's got it on the draw. And a short gain here, down to the 22. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Off play action, Fields. He'll buy some time right. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm, incomplete. Now it's third down. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Here's Fields. And he's going to be marked down short of the first down, right around the 17. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And it'll be fourth down. Santos' kick is up and through. And that stretches this lead to 20-8. to eight. Well, they picked up right where they left off in the first half. First drive after the break, they come away with three and increase that lead. Yeah, and you just want to keep building on that lead, don't you? Whether it's six points or three points, take everything you can get, keep maneuvering, keep adding to it, keep making it difficult for them to come back. It's a squib kick fielded just inside the 20. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. And really, Charles, not much of a surprise that they're losing. They just haven't been able to get much of anything going in the pass game. And as you well know, in today's NFL, if the passing game isn't working, usually not much else is working either. You're exactly right about that, partner. And I know that right now the easy answer would be, hey, let's run the football. But that might not be everything you need. So despite the fact that they've struggled throwing it, they've got to find some type of a play multiple plays that puts the ball in the air and allows for them to have some success. A couple of quick incompletions, and now they're just one more away from getting off the field. They've got options now. Could they dial up a blitz here or just drop everyone into coverage to crowd the throwing lanes? They'll fake the give. Now Goff. Buying time to his left. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. The goal is certainly to try and make a big play happen and climb back into this game, but you have to be careful. If you overdo it, you could turn it over and hurt your team. Here we go on four. Golf. Complete, they cannot convert, and they turn it over. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Play action, it's Fields. And he fires one incomplete. And to put it mildly, this is a tough spot defensively. They have to come right back out and defend their red zone. But how about that good first step towards forcing them to settle for at least three points? I think they're also thinking bigger right now. Imagine being able to stop them totally and change the momentum. They'll run it. Here's Montgomery. And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. Good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Let's go, hey. Go, Mike, Mike 34, Mike 34. Wild Bill, Wild Bill. 
They'll run with Montgomery. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Bears. David Montgomery, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Bears have put this one to bed here in the fourth quarter. They'll try and throw for it. And he will get into the end zone to extend the lead by two more. And around the goal line, especially on two-point tries, sometimes the QB's best friend is that big target, the tight end. I love how you described it because you know he's going to have some length and some catch radius as well as a big body to keep people away from the football. offense ready to kick off their next drive. Charles, we know that this offense is aggressive. We saw that last drive. They went for it on fourth down, didn't get it. Then they give up the touchdown, so now you feel like they really need to respond here. They certainly do, but let's face it. Sometimes when you take that risk, you understand if you fail, a little more onus goes back on your ball club to try and pick themselves back up. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth, but a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 49-yard line. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Throw to St. Brown, complete on the left side. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 26. 15 yards there on the catch and run. On first down, it's gone. And that's out to the flat for Swift. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. Go off a handoff here to Swift. Down inside the 10. And he takes this one in for a Lions touchdown. DeAndre Swift, a 21-yard touchdown run. And the Lions have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Well, they needed three scores to have any chance. There's the first of the three as they get into the end zone. Yeah, Brandon, I think that our guys at Next Gen Stats in charge of the win probability are probably saying your chances still aren't great. But now, you still got more than three minutes to go. You got to focus on the task at hand, which is going to be getting the football back as quickly as possible. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Two scores down, two timeouts at their disposal. This is a critical onside kick. And the Bears' hands team able to pounce on it and get the football. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. The fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And... I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. On second down, here's a keeper by the QB. And he'll be out of bounds. The pickup goes for 13 and sets him up first and goal. Well, that's the fear any defense has when the quarterback gets involved in the running game. You don't usually account for him, and he's hurting them today. Yeah, he's been very involved in the running game. Defensively, when you've got the coverage good downfield, how do you account for him, though? Occasionally, you start to... And he'll get in. He's over for the touchdown. 
The sneak successful from a yard out. And the Bears have made it a three-score game now here in the fourth. So that drive there, CD, a good response, and that might be the one that gets them to the finish line, a comfortable lead. Yeah, and that's all about not letting the team back into a game because they just gave up a touchdown. It was back to a two-score game, and anything can happen in that situation. Oh, and now they're going to fake it. He's got it at the 10, and he gets in. But no one was expecting a fake there, but they had two more onto their lead.